What is a DNA probe? And how can it be hybridized with DNA in order to target and identify specific genes? We're gonna look at all of that, including the role of genetic counseling in the NHS to help you smash those AQA A-level biology exams. So let's get into it, guys. So let's look at DNA probes, DNA hybridization, and medicine. So first of all, DNA probes and hybridization. So DNA probes are used to find specific alleles of genes or to look for genetic disorders by identifying known mutated alleles. Now let's recap, an allele is a different version of a gene, a gene codes for a protein, and a mutation is a change in the genes. So a mutated allele is where the base sequence is different and the allele now is different. A DNA probe is a short strand of DNA that has a specific sequence of bases complementary to a target allele. So it may have AAT, whereas the allele has, let's say, TTA. Now, when the DNA probe binds to the target allele, we call this hybridization because a hybrid is when two different things come together. So we have the probe and we have the DNA, the target DNA, and they come together and hybridize. Two different things coming together. So think about like a hybrid car. That would be petrol and electric. Two different technologies coming together. Now, this is an example here. We can see the target allele or the DNA of the, the, the patient, for example, at the bottom. And we can see we've got our gene probe at the top. So where there's a T on the patient's DNA, there'll be an A on the gene probe. They'll be complementary. And in addition to that, we can tag it with a fluorescent or radioactive marker. And that means that wherever the gene probe binds, it will give us an indication of the location in the patient's DNA where that allele is present. So the DNA probe has a marker, as we've just said, so that the target allele can be identified or detected. Now, markers may include fluorescent markers. They can be detected by UV light, or they could be radioactive markers, which are detected using autoradiography using X-ray film. Now, in the AQA mark schemes, you will often see X-ray film and autoradiography being accepted, so either of those is fine. Now, how are the target genes identified, next of all? Well, the DNA is digested using a restriction endonuclease. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, but basically restriction means it restricts it at a certain point. Endo is within nuclease within the genetic material, so it's it's basically like an enzyme that snips DNA at a specific point. Now, they're then separated using a process called gel electrophoresis. Now, that's basically where you have like a slab of gel or a block of gel, and the snipped up DNA fragments move through the gel at different speeds depending on their size. And I always tell my students, think of it a little bit like chromatography, where molecules are separated based on their solubility. In this case, the DNA fragments are separated based on how many bases are in them. Now, the DNA fragments are then added to a nylon membrane, and the fluorescently labelled probe is added. Now, after this, the tar if the target allele is present, the DNA probe will bind via hybridization, which we explained earlier. Finally, UV light is then used to look for fluorescence. So we can see that here where we've got the DNA bands, so these pieces of DNA have been snipped up using restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases, and the gel has been run, so the DNA has moved along the gel, and we've got these nice bands where we've got regions where we've got the same fragments together. And you can see here that we've got the gene probe binding to this target allele and fluorescing. So we know that this allele here has bound to the probe. Now, what is a microarray next of all? Well, basically, a microarray is where you take a glass slide with microscopic spots of DNA probes, and those DNA probes are produced by sequencing the desired allele and then carrying out PCR. So basically, you put in the alleles you want, and you carry out PCR to make loads of copies of that specific probe. And I'll be releasing a separate video on PCR soon. Now, this will be attached in rows, and we call that a DNA microarray. Micro, because we're dealing with something microscopic, very small. 
an array because an array is like an arrangement where we've got them in rows. So we've basically got here, like this diagram on the right, spots of DNA probes arrayed in rows. So that is our micro array there. Now, a sample of human DNA that has been fluorescently labeled, so this time we're fluorescently labeling the human DNA rather than the probe, gets washed over the array. So that'd be washed over the surface of the glass slide. And the sample will bind to the DNA probes via complementary base pairing, so adenine to thymine, guanine to cytosine, if it contains the target alleles. The array is then washed to remove any unbound human DNA, and under UV light, we can detect any labeled DNA that is bound to the probe. Now, if a spot fluoresces once it's been washed, that means the probe is bound, and that section has the target allele. So for example, it could be used to look for a mutated allele that causes a disease, something like a gene for cancer or something like that. Now, this is another example of a microarray here because I feel like we need to break it down in a couple of ways because it's quite a tricky concept. So we can see here that this spot is fluorescing and that's where we've got the human DNA binding to the probe that was attached to the glass slide. So once that's been washed, that'll stay stuck on via complementary base pairing because it will have hydrogen bonded and it will fluoresce, okay? So we know that the allele for the mutation that causes, for example, cancer is there, for example. Now, what are the uses of genetic screening next of all? Well, firstly, genetic screening, which is to look at a patient's DNA to look for things like mutated alleles, can be used in personalized medicine. So for example, a mutation in the HER2 proto-oncogene can cause breast cancer. Now, Herceptin is a drug used to treat the specific type of breast cancer, and genetic screening allows us to determine whether Herceptin will be effective, so doctors can decide, based on a patient's genetics, whether a certain drug will work for them, which is revolutionary if you think about it. Now, number two, we can use genetic screening to identify health risks. So, for example, by detecting mutated alleles, that increase the risk of diseases like cancer, individuals can make adjustments to their lifestyles and they can potentially avoid developing that disease, which is gonna prolong people's lives and improve their quality of life. Number three, we can also use genetic screening to identify genetic diseases like Huntington's. Now, Huntington's is a disease that doesn't show till middle age. So young people could have it and not know about it. Now, if we use genetic screening, that means that individuals can find out whether they've got it or not, and then they have time to prepare for the disease. And it may inform them about things like whether or not to have children or whether to get their children screened and, and things of that nature. Now, interestingly, the NHS screens newborn babies for cystic fibrosis. So it's quite possible that you've had genetic screening carried out on you as a baby. So what is genetic counselling next of all then? Well, it's basically giving advice to patients about their risk of genetic disorders. Now, genetic counsellors use results from genetic screening to advise patients. And that can give patients information about whether they are a carrier for a mutated allele, like, for example, with cystic fibrosis. And the genetic counsellor can then recommend treatment options available. So again, genetic screening can lead to positive results that can be shared by genetic counsellors, you know, a patient may have a mutated allele, for example, with cystic fibrosis, and then a treatment plan can be arranged. Now, let's get into some exam practice next of all, because this is quite a tricky topic. So how do we apply it to AQAA level exam questions to get the most marks possible? Well, question one here, explain how the use of a gene probe could be used to identify a mutated allele. So pause the video, look over your notes and have a go at this question now. So the answer is, for one mark, you would say a gene probe is added to the sample and will bind to the mutant allele. Next mark, the gene probe attaches to one of the DNA strands because it will have the same basis as one strand and it will be complementary to the other one. For a third mark, you could say via complementary base pairing. And this is a key term, a key phrase rather, 
that I always say to my students, squeeze that in if you're talking about DNA replication or gene technology where appropriate, because it quite often gets you a mark. Now, finally, you could have got a mark for saying radioactivity is detected on X-ray film or by autoradiography in the case of radioactive markers. Or you could have got the same mark by talking about fluorescence being tested for by UV light. And as I said earlier, AQA are keen on you saying X-ray film or autoradiography. Now, guys, that's all we've got time for. Please like, comment and subscribe and drop down any questions in the bottom because this is a tough topic. Take care and I will see you in the next one.